All right, let's uh, get into the next discussion now. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is an oil-rich nation, no doubt. For many years, the country's survival has been dependent on proceeds from the sale of crude oil. But the crude oil theft, oil spillage, and pipeline vandalism are just a few of the problems the country has to deal with. And these harmful practices pollute the land and aquatic environment in the oil-rich Niger Delta region. People who are directly affected uh, by the environmental pollution want government to act on its promise for a cleanup, especially in the Ogoni region, and take steps to check the degradation of the environment. Well, we have joining us from our Abuja studio a lawyer and co-convener coalition of Niger Delta civil society activists and uh, Niger Delta environmental uh, protection group Tochuku Ohazurike. Good morning and thanks for joining us on the show. Good morning please. All right uh, great Let, let's begin with the um, Ogoni cleanup that uh, you know one minute you you get a sense that it's about to happen and the next minute is like uh, back to square one, nothing exactly going on. But from your standpoint, what uh, can you tell us about uh, developments as far as it concerns the Ogoni cleanup? All right, thank you very much. You know, there are a lot of preliminary arrangements that have to be done before the actual cleanup commences. And all those uh, preliminary processes and procedures are being consensuously followed and the, sometime in September, from the schedule that we are aware of, the actual cleaning up will commence. So, but all those, you cannot commence the cleaning up without those uh, initial procedures being effectively done. So, but once that is done, the actual clean up will now start. And I think everything is moving on all right. Very soon it will co commence. And the doubt that is out there in the media will no longer be there. Mm. Well, UNEP, UNEP came up with, uh, with, with, a, with a report on the cleanup, how much it's going to cost and all of that. And the federal government at the time, I think about two years ago, in fact, mm -hmm. under former President Jonathan, there was a move to, to begin the cleanup. And we remember when uh, President, uh, sorry, Vice President Shibajo, when he was acting president, there was also a move to uh, actually go for the cleanup. And if you ask people from the Niger Delta, they're saying there's no sign of anything clean up going mm. on or about to start. So how do we reconcile these two, especially seeing it from outside of the Niger Delta? This, the situation in Ogoni can be likened to the situation in, about the second Niger Bridge. If you ask some people in the, in the southeast, they will tell you the second Niger Bridge has not commenced, but the situations are that there are a lot of uh, preliminary processes that must be followed through. Ground preparations, movement of getting the selections correctly. So those things are being done. But what people want to see are the physical actions of excavators or machines that will be deployed doing this cleanup. That's what they expect to see. And to some who do not understand the intricacies of it, as far as they have not seen those, they will believe nothing is happening. But I can assure you those preliminary processes have a timeline within which they will be completed. And that's why I said earlier that about September, the actual cleanup will commence. And people will see what they expect to see, which is the removal of the soil and the actual cleanup the way it is expected, the way they should understand it. But everything is moving on, on schedule. All right, let's dwell a bit still on this Sogoni cleanup. You, you talk about the processes, uh, what and what needs to be in place before it actually happens. What exactly uh, can you tell us about what needs to uh, be in place first? There are samples that must be collected. There are tests that must be run, and these things take a lot of time to come out, and when, so that you will know what to use because you have done actual sample testing and you know how to do what you have to do at a particular point. The level of degradation at a particular spot is not, also, is not the level of degradation at another spot. The depth of the devastation at a particular spot is not also the depth of it at another spot. All these issues, all the samples must be tested, all the, all the, all the testing must be completed, the results obtained, and once they are obtained, and those things don't come easy. Ordinarily, here in the country, we don't even have the technology for that. So it takes a lot of time and the processes are going on. The reason is 
that people have not seen that action of removal and replacement and replenishing. That's what I said. So once those preliminary tests are done and the samples have been collected, and those, all those samples have been collected, the process is ongoing. And from our monitoring from the Niger Delta Environmental Protection Group, we are aware that the process is continuing consensuously and according to the timeline by September, it will be delivered. Okay. All right. Um, talk to us about the issue of sabotage in this issue of spillage. Some of the extracted, uh, the, some of the oil majors have complained that most of the spillages we have mm. are a product of sabotage, are a product of uh, theft from the people. Talk to us about that. All right. Thank you very much. You know, um, when uh, the President Muhammad Buhari federal government took office, the, um, sometime in November of 2015, they started the operation Delta Safe to replace the earlier operation that was there called the Operation Pulo Shield. Now, Operation Pulo Shield had some issues, had failures, which after a review, the government felt, okay, can we institute a new uh, operation to take care of the issues of the Niger Delta? You know, the issues of the Niger Delta are multifaceted. You have the environmental degradation issues. You have the national security threat issues. You have the stealing and economic sabotage issues. So these are all the issues that, we are, so, that are supposed to be handled by the operation Delta Safe. But somewhere along the line, issues started emanating. And we believe that the commander of the uh, Operation Delta Safe has a lot of questions to answer both to the government and to the, to the, both to the government, the Nigerian people and the, uh, the people of the Niger Delta. Because if, as commander of the Operation Delta Safe, the Joint Task Force, mm -hmm. having Army, Navy, Air Force, Police, Civil Defense, you are particularly and specifically mandated to safeguard the Niger Delta, make it safe and exploration friendly so that companies and government can do their business in the Niger Delta and also safeguard the environment. And as of today, Nigeria is losing about 300,000 barrels of oil daily. Daily. It means that something is wrong somewhere. Also, our worry is that as this stealing is going on, the people, are, the people who are involved are amassing so much arms and ammunition. What are they going to do with those arms and ammunition? So it, that is also a threat to the, uh, to the national security. The environmental degradation is not just in Ogoni. You know, we are just, you just talked about only Ogoni. Ogoni yeah. is just one of the hundreds of communities in the yeah. Niger Delta. There are a lot of other communities that are also suffering degradation. And we took particularly an issue which I know was, must have uh, cost the commander in his response to our protest against what is happening in the Niger Delta to accuse a, a, a company of being behind what we are doing. And we just laughed over it because the thing is this. We took just one issue to, to crystallize what we were saying. And we took the Nembe Creek trunk line. In the Nembe Creek trunk line, six oil fields pump their oil through that trunk line to the Bonnet Terminal for exportation. That is OML 18, OML 23, 24, 25, 29, and 55. These six, a lot of companies are involved. It's not one person that, not one company that owns these six. Different companies own these six lines. And the trunk line itself is 55% owned by government and 45% owned by a company. Mm -hmm. Now, it has 97 kilometers of length. And there are 24 bunkering points along the length of that trunk line. So as these companies pump, as at I'm talking about May, to May last, just last month. Yeah. There are 24 points where that pipeline has been breached by bunkers. And 24 is not just one. If it's one, you can call it isolated. Oh, two, there must have been a mistake. But when it's 24 and they are all operating without any inhibition, then there is a question to be asked. What is responsible for this? And that is why we have said... And now, okay, let me quote. Are what you the, saying, uh, let me, let me jump DTA in said, very quickly. That uh, why should. Are you saying that you, yes, have, you have concrete evidence against the JTF that includes the Navy uh, and, um, you know, all the others of actually, I mean, carrying out illegal oil bunkering, oil theft, 
and all of that. And if you really do have evidence, what concrete steps have you taken to um, go beyond mere allegations to actually taking action to see uh, that um, the commander that you've been calling right. for his removal is actually, that you actually get that at the end of the day? Yes, we have a call for the removal of the commander because, you know, in military operations, everything is regimented. So the, the military operations like this is like a fish that stinks from the head on down. Once the head is clear, the entire body will be clear. So well, that is why we said the commander of the Joint Task Force, the Operation Delta Safe, has to be removed. And to, 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 beyond bare allegations in the media, we have written petitions to the president. We have written petitions to the National Security Advisor. We have written to the Chief of Defense Staff. We have written to the Chief of Army Staff. And for the economic sabotage aspect of it, we also wrote to the EFCC. We also wrote to NAPIMS. We wrote to NNPC because they own 55% of virtually all these, for the joint ventures, they own 55% of every, all these trunk lines that are being uh, breached. So that is what we have done. We have written the petitions and we had, we've attached evidence we had attacked pictures we attacked information that will be critical to identifying particular spots where these bunkering activities are taking place so it is not just uh, making mere allegations we have taken the necessary concrete steps that have been uh, that are available to us constitutionally and uh, later today the attorney general of the federation is going to receive another petition with an automaton to commence investigation and prosecution of this commander of the JTF. It has to be done. Something must be done. We are losing. See, when criminal non-state actors have millions of hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars in their possession, it's a serious threat to national security. And oh. we cannot, and when it starts, it starts from our area. And we cannot keep quiet and allow it to happen while uh, somebody makes money and thinks he's just doing business. We will not allow that to happen. We will do everything within our constitutional powers to allow the world to know, to allow the relevant authorities to know what is really happening, and then the necessary actions we will insist have to be taken. The man right. has to leave the... Somebody left the seat for him to occupy. Yeah. It's not his yeah. private Chukun, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. Uh, beyond the, the security operatives, uh, the head of security, a joint uh, security, you are calling for his removal. How culpable are Niger Delta youths who sometimes uh, have been accused of being part or even the ones also carrying out this bunkering and oil theft? Yes, we, are, we agree that there are a few bad eggs. And in, in, in response to that, majority of us who are not, who, are, who love this country, who are patriotic, in the petitions I mentioned earlier, we submitted, we put names of those who are involved in this bunkering. And the network they have is community by community. And we put their names community by community in the petitions we submitted. Mm. So we, just like we have identified one bad egg, we don't have any grounds against the Nigerian military. We don't have any grounds against the government. We only have issues against the man who is responsible. So... We singled him out, just like we singled out the persons who are our own brothers and sisters too, who are involved. And we put their names. And in some circumstances, we put photos, photo, some of their photos. I said, these are the persons involved. We put their names, community by community, so it will be easier for the government to, 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 to address the issue. So, so has the not, government we, we don't acted say we on that all the entire while? Niger Delta people and the youths. Yeah, Tochuko, has the government acted on this, on the petition? Well, we have, have not been communicated. communicated we have not been communicated if they have done that. Okay. Um, some of the oil majors have actually, like Mike said earlier, accused um, youth of illegal bunkering uh, leading to degradation of the environment there in the Niger Delta, including, of course, uh, the Ogoni area. On the other hand, um, some of the youth are saying, no, the, the, the IOEs, uh, IOCs, mm, that I they're see. actually the ones responsible for much of the spillage that has gone on in destroying uh, the environment there. From your point of view, what would you say is really at the root of uh, the environmental degradation that's going on? And how culpable uh, do you think the IOCs are? And what should happen as far as they are concerned? It is the responsibility of DPR to ensure that the IOCs operate 
in line with international best practices and standards. So any failures on the part of the interna uh, IOCs, the international lawyer companies, the question has to go straight to DPR. They have their own issues. The IOCs have their own issues. There are a lot of uh, opaque practices going on. They don't declare to even the, to the uh, federal government how much they pump at the pump heads so that nobody knows exactly what is happening, the volume of oil pumped out from our country and issues like that. So that on one side. The youth also, like I said earlier, a few bad eggs amongst us. We have, but what we owe the country is to identify them and report to the unnecessary authorities. And this, the, the operation data safe is aware of the identities of these persons, but because of negligence, incompetence, and outright collusion, by the commander of the JTF, the Operation Data Safe. Nothing is happening, and that's why it's going on. And the degradation, it, people need to take a trip to the creeks, to these places, to see the level of devastation. All fauna and flora in the waters are dead. They are no more. And people cannot fish, people cannot farm, people don't have anything to do again in, inside the villages. And it's so bad. And this commander is, is just sitting there thinking, you know, he actually believes that the oil belongs to an individual. And that was why he, he allowed it and he was uh, encouraging people to steal the oil. Yeah, but because you seem he, to be he, putting his all of the blame. He believed it was owned by an individual and not the country. You seem to be putting all of the blame on the yes. commander of the uh, Joint Task Force uh, uh, Operation Delta Safe. What about the side of government? I recall when uh, Vice President was acting, he did visit uh, the Niger Delta and he promised, uh, when, as far as the issue of um, uh, modular refineries, illegal refineries as, as it were, yeah, that, you know, that um, young people, those involved in this, would actually be absorbed by the government to run the modular refineries. Uh, what has been going on? Has, has government kept its side of the bargain? Now, when we say government, mm. government acts through agencies, persons, authorities. So when we say, when we pick the uh, commander of the Joint Tax Force, we say we won't blacklist the entire uh, Operation Delta Safe on the Joint Tax Force. Like I said earlier, if fish stinks from the head on down, the head of this fish, the Operation Delta Safe, is thinking very, is oozing very offensive order. That's why we say if the head is corrected and there, are, there, is, there is restoration of sanity, then all these other processes can start. Because people now see that it is even more profitable for them to operate doing the legal business. And it will not allow government to do what government should do. But when there is sanity restored, when security has taken charge, done what it should do, then these processes can commence because people are not encouraged to do it simply because there is more money doing their legal business. All right, uh, we have to leave you here now. Uh, Tochuku Ohazurike, environmentalist and lawyer, thank you so much for joining us on the program. It's a pleasure. All Thank right. Uh, of course, always a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, moving on, we're going to take a very short break. And when we come back, there's more to talk about on TVC Breakfast. And it has to do with the Benway killings. They just continue every day. <laughs>